Hey everyone, welcome back to the lab. In this video, we're gonna be talking about Cloud Seed and giving you a quick start on it, which will basically allow you to spin up a full stack F Sharp app in about 10 minutes. So if you didn't know, Cloud Seed is the F Sharp project boilerplate I've built over the past several years. Its goal is to make building F Sharp apps easy while providing a robust foundation for scale. I've used it in most of my projects over that time. You can find a, a huge list of my projects uh, right here. And I've been tweaking, refactoring, and overhauling aspects of it as I discovered better ways of doing things. So in this post, we're going to be quick starting Cloud Seed with everything you need to know to get up and running in about 10 minutes. So how can I get up and running with Cloud Seed in 10 minutes is the question we're going to answer in this post. All right, so here's Cloud Seed. So Cloud Seed provides a seed for building 3S, or Simple Scalable System, apps with F Sharp. It aims to make getting started developing extremely easy while providing a strong foundation for any scale. And so the way I think about it is like, it really is a seed, like you start it here and then you're gonna evolve it from there and it's gonna provide everything you need to evolve into whether it's just a side project app or whether you're trying to build you know, a monolith that's gonna power your whole business. It aims to be that thing that can handle both um, and do both pretty well. And so here's what it looks like. Um, you can see that we got two containers here. The data part is really just for local development to give you that ability to test and develop against an actual data store, hopefully the real data store, um, or at least the real technology that you're gonna be using in production. Um, but the main part here is this container here, which is gonna have our F Sharp app running Giraffe. And we're gonna be using an indie framework for our ORM. We're gonna be using DBUp for migrations. And then for front end, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be building server-side rendered HTML. I'm using the draft.view engine library, which is an HTML DSL. But of course, because we're doing server-side rendering, you could choose all sorts of things like using your own templating language like Scribon or Handlebars or Liquid or just build your own with you know string concatenation. Any of that's possible and it makes it really easy to kind of switch it out here. And then last thing to call out is uh, basically I've set this up so that it can do Tailwind um, with Daisy UI pruning based on the things in the F Sharp project. I like Tailwind a lot. I know a lot of people like Tailwind, but it is kind of a faff to set up. So we're shipping with that. Um, easy to remove if you don't want it, but if you do like it, it's already there, so you don't have to worry about it. And that's basically Cloud Seed from a very high level. And that's basically everything you need to like build, you know, a basic app. Most apps, 95% of apps are gonna need these things, you know, the front end, the back end, testing, data, um, a way to host it in both local and prod and get like a decent experience there. And so this is what it provides, kind of the minimum of that, but actually everything you need to kind of scale from there. Now, a lot of people don't like containers. Um, I'm a huge container fan. I think it provides really easy local dev and portability. And it's basically the only way that you can get an environment locally that actually mirrors or closely mirrors what's in prod. And if you don't have that, like you're just asking for trouble. Um, so I really like containers. So we're using Docker and Docker Compose for that. Um, and what this means is when we, you know, actually spin this up, we are just getting two containers. Um, and so the main one is our app. This is where like all of our logic lives here. Um, and then as I mentioned, the database one is really just for, for local um, development. We would expect that, you know, when you go to actually deploy your app, you're really just deploying this one container um, and you'd be using a database in the cloud, probably like a managed SQL database, or you could run your own whatever. But that's how we kind of expect this to be used. But you know, if you're into something else, let me know. Um, I just haven't seen other patterns very often. Okay, so that's an overview of Cloud Seed. Now in the rest of this post, we're gonna walk through how to set up Cloud Seed on your own machine so you can just get started building. All right, the first section we're gonna talk about is dependencies. So Cloud Seed aims to minimize dependencies, but there are a few we need to get started. Um, the required dependencies are here. So Cloud Seed requires containerization infrastructure on your computer in order to run. We utilize containerization to minimize the amount of other dependencies and configuration you need to get set up before you can start building and deploying your app. That's the beauty of containers. Basically, you have a config, it's infrastructure as code, um, and if you can run the container on one machine, theoretically, it runs the same on all machines. So that's why we like containers. But in order to do that, we got to actually get the ability to run containers on our machine um, so that it can you know, actually do all that stuff internally. All right, so the first thing we need is just Docker, We're using Docker for containerization. It's got really good reviews, um, really great ecosystem support, um, which makes it a really good choice for most apps. Yes, there are other like containerization technologies out there, but Docker is just the leading one. So let's just use that. Um, so to install it, just follow the official Docker install guide here. 
Um, next we're using Docker Compose. Uh, so Docker Compose is container orchestration. So it allows you to spin up multiple containers and kind of manage them. Um, this is a bit overkill for our purposes as we're really only using it to orchestrate the local database for your app and the tests. But I think it is critical for providing an authentic development environment for building robust apps quickly. So I think it's definitely worth it. And that's kind of what I was mentioning earlier where it's like, if you're not doing containers, like you're asking for your environments and test and prod and stuff to be different because it's just hard to get two machines to be exactly the same. So we use containers to kind of constrain the ability for our environments to be different. Inside of our container, you know, it's a sealed environment. So theoretically everything in there is the exact same. So we're kind of removing these kinds of issues. But, you know, we can't say that the outside world doesn't exist, right? So how do we handle these other things? Well, one of the big things I see that goes wrong when you're trying to test things and it works in test and fails in prod, or you're, you're building something and it works on your machine, but it doesn't work in prod, is that, yes, the environments are different, but also it's like the data stores we're using different. So maybe in prod, uh, it treats this kind of thing differently, or actually the assumptions are different, or in test, if we're using a mock um, database, like this SQL query doesn't actually run on the real thing. Um, and so this is why I think it's so important to have a real data store to test against. And by using a container, we can basically simulate any kind of data store you'd want and spin it up very easily because we have this orchestration. So that's my spiel on why I think that's important. Um, you can install this here. Um, now there are some recommended dependencies, so you don't need these installs, but I would highly recommend it to improve your experience overall with, yes, Cloud Seed, but also just F-sharp in general. So first is .NET. This is the um, .NET CLI, which is gonna allow you to do things like add packages, remove packages, restore, um, all sorts of things like that. And um, I think is also necessary for a lot of these kind of like IntelliSense things. Um, so if you don't have that, go check this out um, for the official uh, install guide. And the next one I would recommend is Ionide or Equivalent. So this is the editor plugin for F Sharp, which allows you to get like IntelliSense, you know, control click in um, to see the definition of things. Uh, red squigglies when something's wrong. Um, yes, you can code without like IntelliSense, but like don't do that probably. It's just too much pain, not, not worth it. So definitely get that. It works with, I think, most mainstream editors, things like VS Code, Visual Studio. We got Writer. Um, I'm sure there's plugins built for other things as well. Uh, so you can check it out here. So I'm going to assume that you've installed all the things. Now let's talk about actually running Cloud Seed. And I'm going to demo some of this stuff. So this is probably going to be longer than 10 minutes, but I want to show you that like I'm doing the things. It actually works to prove to you that, you know, this is, this is how to do it. With our dependencies installed, we're now ready to start running and building our Cloud Seed F Sharp app. And also note, all these instructions are available in the repos readme. So those will be updated along with the code. Um, but this is basically how it will work. So the first thing you got to do is get Cloud Seed. So once you purchased it, you'll get access to this repo. And I've linked it here just in case you don't have it, but it should also be sent out. So you can see this is real. Here's the, you know, readme with all the commands and stuff that we're talking about here. And now that you've got it, um, let's you know, clone it on your machine, get in the terminal, open it there, and then we're going to run it. So open your terminal in its directory, and we're going to spin up the app along with the local database to get that full development environment. And so here is the um, command. It's just Docker compose down, Docker compose build, and Docker compose up, which basically just kills any existing running containers. It's going to rebuild the containers to make sure we get any new changes you've made. Um, and then we're going to spin up the new containers. Um, this scares a lot of people that we're rebuilding. Don't worry, Docker has incredible caching system um, to understand if something's actually changed or not. So if nothing's changed, the builds will be really fast. The builds are already really fast anyway if you're rebuilding the whole thing, um, but don't worry too much about this. So I'm gonna copy this and I'm going to head into my editor here. You can see that this is Cloud Seed Base. So this is the repo I just showed you, just on my local machine. I'm going to copy this in here and run it. And we'll walk through the code a little bit um, later, but I just want to show you that this is actually running and show you kind of what it looks like. So here it's building all the things. We can see that the Postgres um, container has spun up. And now we can see that our app has spun up. Uh, it has run its migrations here and now it's listening. All right, so I just opened up a new tab here and we're at Locos 5001. And we can see that it's just returning a blank here because we're not really sending anything on that. 
But if I go to Sentinels, this is kind of where the example app is that I'll show you in a minute, um, is located to show you like how this is running. And basically what this is gonna do is every time we're hitting this, it's gonna create a new entry in its database, and then it's going to return all the entries. Um, and this database is just a sample table that has sample data to show you that the integration works. And then it's gonna return it on the front end. That shows you how like server-side rendering HTML works. And then the other thing to show you is that, um, see text Excel here, if I show you in head, we're actually using Tailwind. And so this is why it doesn't look like just the white and black of normal. This kind of shows you how Tailwind is actually working and that it's actually being shown on, on the front end. So this is basically the simplest way I can prove to you that end to end, you know, all these components are working together. And we'll go into this a little bit more later, but just wanted to prove to you that that worked. All right. Um, so I showed you localhost 5001. This is where we're listening at. Um, Locos 5001 slash sentinels is where this example page is located at. Um, and then the database is just Locos 5002. Probably not gonna be talking to your database directly, but you know, if you want to, that's where it's listening. Okay, so I will show you exactly how this like thing is working uh, in a bit, but first I wanna show you how to test with CloudSeed. A lot of times for whatever reason, setting up the testing infrastructure can be like the hardest, most painstaking, painful part. Um, so I wanted to provide a few tests that kind of cover some examples of like, how do you spin up the test DB? How do you um, prove that like your functions are working? Things like that. So the command to run this is very similar. The only thing we're doing is we're choosing a different file, um, which is the docker compose.test.yaml file. And this does the same thing, just instead of building the app, it's gonna build app.test. So in my editor, make this a little bigger so you can see it. Um, we can see that we've got app here, app.test here, development database. Um, and so this original thing I showed you runs app and this one that we're gonna run runs app.test. So we can see that it spun up the database and then it just did its migrations here and then it just ran and it looks like failed to zero, passed as 11, which is what we want. So in the exact same way, it's killing any existing um, test containers it has. It's building the new containers, which is also gonna build um, the app code, by the way, uh, because app.test relies on that. And then it's gonna run the new testing containers against that local database that we have. Okay, so that's all you need to know to get started. We are over the 10 minute mark, but you know, I'm doing demos, cut me some slack. But I did wanna provide some like examples of how to do some common things. So CloudSeed ships with an example domain called Sentinels, which I showed you a little bit earlier, um, which just builds some CRUD front end, some data operations and has some domain types to give you an idea of how you might build with these technologies. These are like kind of the simple version of the way that I usually build these apps. Um, so you don't have to do these things, but I, I felt it was important to show you some examples of how you could do common operations. So as I showed you, you can see the, the front end here and the code is all in about like six files. So we got domain, which has our domain types. We've got a service tree, which is kind of how we're doing dependency injection. So it's kind of like the domain, um, but it also contains like types around the uh, persistence logic as well. So it's easy to reference them. And this is how we'll be doing dependency injection throughout. We've got persistence, which is like our repo, if you will. Here we're using entity framework. So really it's just the entity framework um, set up for our domain context. And we've got queries and commands, um, which are kind of like workflows or tasks. I like the domain driven design idea of workflows. And then I like the CQRS idea of splitting queries and commands. So it's more clear, um, is this thing side effect having, or is it mostly read only? Obviously some read things that they're caching or whatever, you know, not totally pure, um, but I still like the idea of splitting them up because um, I think at scale, this gets gets easier, but of course you don't have to do that if you don't want to. And then presentation, and this is where we're building our server side UI code. And if you're building like data APIs, for whatever reason, you can also put them here, kind of like standard. And so we're not gonna go into too much detail for this, but I did just wanna show you that here it is. So I opened up app, written source, and then if you just look in the Sentinels domain, this is where all of these files are. And they're all pretty simple, so nothing crazy. Um, but just there to, to give you an idea of, of how to build with this stuff. So this is just a quick start. So going into all this stuff is like way beyond the scope of this video. Um, and I've written a lot of guides on how kind of all of these different things work, these different technologies, um, a lot of these different patterns, um, stuff like that. So I would encourage you to just get the code, look through it a little bit. If you got any questions, like kind of look through some of these guides. I've got some on back end and kind of all the technologies we're using here. I've got some on front end. So doing all this kind of stuff with F sharp, especially server side rendering, using HTML to DSLs, stuff like that. Um, and then for just, you know, using data, 
simple entity framework, but of course, you know, with F sharp, it's a little different than C sharp, so it might be useful there. And with that, that should get you up and running with a full stack F sharp app using Cloud Seed. Uh, this is a bit longer than 10 minutes, but I think that's a pretty decent overview. So let me know if you have any questions or suggestions or anything as you consider Cloud Seed or as you use it or build your own F sharp apps. I'm happy to help, and this kind of helps me improve the boilerplate um, so it can be easier for me to build my own apps. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.